Okay, this tutorial is going to cover the very basics about cross-site scripting attacks. So if I bring up this web page here, you've got a Wikipedia entry on cross-site scripting, and it tells us cross-site scripting, or XSS, is a type of computer security vulnerability typically found in web applications such as web browsers, right? So, um, and it's basically going to breach the browser security and enable the attacker to put their own malicious code or scripts that will then do something otherwise than intended by that web application or web page. Now, what do you mean by a web application? Okay, well, what is a web application? Well, anytime you go to a website and you have a form that allows you to, let's say, post a comment or go to a forum and, and post a, uh, an entry into the forum or a blog or even a search box like this or a username and login, that's usually done with scripted pages and possibly um, um, quite often a database on the back end. So we call those web applications, right, that allow you to do things in a more dynamic way uh, like have a blog or post to a comment board, something like that. So with this type of attack, the attacker puts, instead of just uh, static mundane text into the blog, they put their own scripts in there and see if they can get those scripts to execute on the server and then do something um, that could affect the users that visit this page, right? Could possibly attack the visitors' computers, um, take over their computers, uh, get access to their computers, uh, redirect users to different web pages, all kinds of things. So we're going to try to set one of these up. Now, I learned the very basics of this from this group right here, Offensive Security. You can see here, offensive-security.com. I recommend you go here and check out their website. It's fantastic. Uh, their classes, their security classes on penetration testing are excellent. The training, um, the security pride, everything they do here is, is really good stuff. So I recommend checking them out. And um, what I, when I learned the basics of cross-site scripting from offensive security, I wanted to set that up myself in my own training scenario. So how to do that. So to do that, what you're going to need to do is set up a web server, right, and have also, let's say, a database server as well. So to do that, I decided to go to apachefriends.org and download XAMPP. Now XAMPP is Apache, MySQL, and PHP, and PHP my admin, right? So it's going to set up a web server scenario. You see, you can click down here click on XAMPP for Windows and go here and then there's a download link here to download XAMPP, right? And you just click here and download XAMPP. And once you've done that, you'll install it on your computer. And you can see here on this Backtrack machine, I've got a remote desktop session to my XP client and I'm just going to show you in my downloads area, I've got the XAMPP installer downloaded. So I installed XAMPP and now I can run it. So once it's installed, I'll just double click on the control panel here and you can see here's the control panel and I will start up the Apache web server and I'll start up the MySQL server here. Okay, so now I have a web server and a database server running okay, on my system. Now the next thing that you're going to need, the next thing that you're going to need, I said okay, now that I have a web server, I need to have a vulnerable web application like um, like I learned through offensive security that I can use. So I went to these guys right here, uh, Damn Vulnerable Web App. And their website looks like this. The website, when you go there, looks like this. It's dvwa.co.uk. And it's Damn Vulnerable Web Application. And if you scroll down, you can download it here, right? You can also reach it off of SourceForge if you just search for, put a search in for DVWA, right? You'll get a search, let's say, and you can see here it's on SourceForge if you click here, and then you can just download it right from this page here. And you can see it's the same tool, okay? So once you've downloaded that, I'll show you once again on my Backtrack client here. If I go to that Downloads folder, I downloaded DVWA, and then I right-clicked on it, extract all and I've got an extracted folder. Now in this folder is another folder and this folder has basically the vulnerable web application, basically the website that you're going to use to practice your cross-site scripting attacks and other web attacks. There's a lot more that you can do. So what you want to do is you're going to want to copy this folder here 
and you'll just copy it. And what you want to do is paste it in your web browser folder for XAMPP. So where is that located, right? So where is your XAMPP web folder? Well, if you go to Start My Computer and go into your C drive, and there's XAMPP right there. So you go in there, and then your web directory for your Apache web server is in your htdocs folder. So you go into htdocs, and that's where I pasted my dvwa folder. And you can see I've got it there, right? So we'll see here. And there I have it pasted right in here, dvwa. Okay, now once you have that set up and you've got your web server, you should be able to reach it from a browser. And if you have problems reaching it from a browser, I'm going to give you another tip. I'm going to open up this folder, dvwa, and you might want to edit this .htaccess file inside of dvwa. So I'm going to open that up. And you can see that this htaccess file, this is an access list file. And I changed this um, to, down here at the bottom, limit to localhost. If you want to be able to reach this, this hackable website, this web app, let's say from another computer on the network, right? then you might need to change it from um, deny all or deny from all to allow from all. So that's what I did. I changed deny. This originally said deny, right? And I changed it to allow. So that allows me to reach this, this folder, this DVWA, from another computer on the network. Now, once again, you wouldn't want to put this folder on a actual web server live on the internet because this damn vulnerable web app is really vulnerable and it will get hacked if you put it on a live server that's available on the public internet. But on my private network here, there's no problem, right? So now I have that set up. So I change the HT access and I'm good to go. So now what I can do is, let me just close this. So once again, this is my Windows XP client that I've installed the web server on, right? You can see I've got a remote desktop session to it from my Backtrack machine. And you can see here I put in the command our desktop and the IP address of this XP client that I wanted to connect to, our desktop, and I connected in, logged in. So now I have that client set up. So let's go to Applications, Internet, Firefox, and let's see if we can reach it. So I'll open up my Firefox browser, and I'm going to put in the IP address that I'm trying to reach. Let's see here, 172.16.10.107. If I go here, you can see that I reached the XAMPP web server. So that's good, right? But that's not where I want to go. Where I want to go is to here, DVWA, which is the folder inside of the web server. So if I go here, I met with a logon screen. Now the first time you go here and you reach your DVWA folder, right, which is in your web server, once again, if you look in here, the DVWA folder is inside of the htdocs folder, which is inside of XAMPP, which is on my C drive, and I have XAMPP Apache started and the MySQL server are both started and running. So now I'm able to reach it. So the first time you get here, you're going to want to click the Setup button, and you're going to want to create your database. And once you create your database, you'll be logged in, you'll be ready to go, and then you can log out. When you log out, this is what the screen looks like. The username is admin. The default username is admin. And the password is password. OK, so I'll log in. And you can see, welcome to the damn vulnerable web app. And what you're going to want to do is, you're going to want to scroll down to the bottom. And it tells you that you're logged in as admin, your username, and the security level on this web app. And right now, the security level is set to high. And we're going to need to change that so we can hack the site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to DVWA security. And I'll change the script security level from high to low and hit submit. So now at the bottom of the page, if I check that, you can see the security level is low. And you can see that there's basically pages set up on this website, this damn vulnerable web application, that you can use for practicing 
certain types of um, attacks. You can see you can do SQL injection, and then you can see here XSS reflected and XSS stored. So this is cross-site scripting. We'll click on stored, and you can see here, here's a little web application that you can attack with a script, right? It's a guest book, right? So there you put in the name, you put in the message, and you sign the guest book, right? So, and then when somebody, let's say, visits this guest book, you'll see what happens. So let's give it a try. So we'll put in test, and then we'll put in, we'll see if as we visit this guest book, if, if we can get it to execute our code, right, as opposed to just signing the guest book. So we'll say script, put some JavaScript in here, and end script, and we'll see if we can just open up a pop-up window. So we'll say alert, hello. Right, and so this is an alert. It's going to open up a pop-up window. This is just a test to see if you can execute some JavaScript through this guestbook. So we'll sign the guestbook, and you can see instantly you get a pop-up hello, and so it worked. Now, so anybody who visits this guestbook, right, will have that pop-up uh, happen to them. Right, anybody who uh, was to visit this web page and see the comments right in the guest book it's going to open up that pop-up window now that's not per se that dangerous it didn't really um, you know it's not yet an attack on a system but it's a proof of concept that this web application this guest book will execute code if a user was to put it in there so that is a vulnerability that has now been um, identified and so now what you could do is something a lot more insidious.